Welcome back everyone. In this video, we are going to learn about the React Refresh feature, which is a really good feature from a developer experience point of view. To help us understand what it brings to the table, let's begin by implementing a click counter in our application. In the source folder, I'm going to create a new file. Click counter.tsx. Within the file, I'm going to paste the code for a basic click counter. You can see that we have a state variable called count and a button to increment the count value. Pretty straightforward. Now let's include this component in app component. Make sure to import it at the top. If you now save the file and start the server, yarn start, we have our button and on click of the button, the count value increments. So the counter is working as expected. Now this is great, but when we are developing a feature, we often want to make modifications in our code to meet the requirement. For example, with the count now being three, I know the counter is working as expected and I need to write some additional code in the app component. So in the app component, if I change the text and save the file, you can see that the text does update in the browser, but the count value is reset to zero. This is because when we save the file, Webpack detects the change and the browser reloads, which causes our count component to lose its state. What would be great is if you could only replace parts that require a change and leave the other components unaffected. This is where React Refresh comes into picture. You might already be aware of hot module replacement. You can say that React Refresh is a newer experimental version of hot module replacement for React components. Let's see how to integrate it into our setup. I'm here at the GitHub repo for the React Refresh Webpack plugin. Scroll down to the installation section and copy the yarn command. If you notice, there are two packages, React Refresh itself and the Webpack plugin since we use Webpack for our dev server. Go back to VS Code and run the command in the terminal. Once the installation completes, we can modify our webpack config. Now, if you refer to the GitHub readme for usage, the code makes use of a variable to check if the environment is dev and conditionally applies the plugin. So is development and new React Refresh webpack plugin. However, since we have separate configs for dev and prod, the changes are quite simple. So for step one in webpack.dev.js, we begin by setting devserver.hot to true. So devserver is an object with the property hot set to true. This enables webpack's hot module replacement. For step two, we import the webpack plugin for React Refresh. So const react refresh webpack plugin and require it from the package we have just installed. After importing, add it to the list of plugins. New react refresh webpack plugin. If you now save the file and restart the server, you can see that we still have the text and the click counter. Now I'm going to click five times. Back in VS Code, in app.tsx, I'm going to edit the text and save the file. Head back to the browser and you can see that the count state is preserved. The count is still five. The text though did get updated. And this holds good with CSS files as well. So in styles.css, change orange to blue 
and you can see that the count state is preserved. There is no need of a page refresh to account for changes in files. So there we have it, our React refresh feature integrated. When developing a React application, it is common to cause a state change in the application and then edit some parts of the code. React Refresh will help a lot by preserving the component state. Now I do want to point out one thing about the usage guide in the GitHub repo. The documentation specifies that the Babel loader needs to contain the plugins option for React Refresh slash Babel and in the Webpack list of plugins, we need to include webpack.hotmodule-replacement. When I was understanding the integration, I did not want to blindly copy the code. So I was able to make this work without having the need to add these details in the config file, which is why I didn't mention it as part of the setup either. However, if you do come across a scenario where React Refresh is failing, please do consider adding the code I've just pointed out in the documentation. Also, now that we have the dev server setting, we can remove the dash dash open flag from the npm script and add dev server dot open and set it to true. This has the same effect. All right then, thank you guys for watching. Do make sure to subscribe to the channel and in the next video, let's add another tool to improve the developer experience.